you're that much of a weak person that it took you 40 years to Do get you enough. really want to say that? The numbers of African-American men being killed right now. It's so minimal. It's, 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 all, it's overblown. Do you see a future where Barbie talks about racism, about privilege? We don't want to alienate anybody. Nikki Haley says she'll leave her post as U.S. ambassador to the U.N. by the end of the year. Appointed during President Trump's transition, Haley lasted longer than the average senior administration official, surviving her former boss Rex Tillerson, two national security advisors, and four communications directors. As to who will replace Haley, Trump has an idea. You, the people that know know that Ivanka would be dynamite, but uh, you know I'd then be accused of nepotism if you can believe it, right? In his first TV interview since coming out on top in Sunday's election, Brazil's far-right, pro-torture presidential candidate, who previously praised dictators, said the country needs authority, not authoritarianism. Winning 46% of the vote, Jair Bolsonaro fell a few points shy of an outright victory and will face leftist Workers' Party candidate Fernando Haddad in a runoff on October 28th. Google has taken itself out of the race for a $10 billion contract to build the Defense Department's cloud computing infrastructure, saying the deal might conflict with its principles on artificial intelligence. Those guidelines came out in June, after thousands of employees pressured the company to drop its AI drone contract with the Pentagon, signing a letter that argued, quote, Google should not be in the business of war. In the 24 hours after Taylor Swift posted an endorsement of two Democratic candidates to Instagram, 65,000 Americans registered to vote, according to Vote.org. And in Swift's home state of Tennessee, more than 5,000 voters have registered this month ahead of today's deadline. That's 60% more voters than registered in all of September. The Supreme Court reconvened today with a full bench for the first time since Anthony Kennedy retired in July. Brett Kavanaugh cemented the court's conservative majority as the justices heard oral arguments for a case that asks which felonies count as violent when it comes to criminal sentencing. And other cases on the docket may have an even broader impact. Like a class action suit that asks how quickly DHS needs to start deportation proceedings against immigrants with criminal records. The lead plaintiff, Moni Priap, became a lawful permanent resident in 1981, but he was picked up by immigration authorities in 2013, seven years after he served time for a misdemeanor marijuana possession charge. DHS said that since Priap's drug conviction was a deportable offense, he was subject to mandatory detention, meaning they could hold him in immigration jail indefinitely without bond while his deportation case played out. Nielsen v. Priap, which will be argued tomorrow, asks if immigrants who've served time are exempt from mandatory detention if DHS doesn't take them into custody immediately after they complete their criminal sentence. Russell Bucklew was sentenced to death in Missouri for murder, kidnapping, and rape. Missouri executes prisoners by lethal injection, the most common execution method in the U.S. But Bucklew was born with a rare medical condition that covers his head, neck, and throat in blood-filled tumors. He argued that an injection could make the tumors burst, causing him to hemorrhage and potentially choke on his own blood, and asked to be executed in a gas chamber instead. Bucklew v. Presythe asks whether the Eighth Amendment, which bans cruel and unusual punishment, grants death row inmates the right to prove that a certain execution method would be unconstitutionally torturous. It'll be argued in November, three weeks before another Eighth Amendment case, Tim's v. Indiana, which is about something called civil asset forfeiture, a tactic that lets cops seize property they say was involved in a crime, including money, real estate, and cars. Like a Land Rover owned by Tyson Timms, who was convicted in Indiana of felony drug dealing. The Land Rover was worth more than four times the maximum fine for Timms's crime. But the Indiana Supreme Court said the seizure was legal under state law, and that the Eighth Amendment's ban on excessive fines doesn't clearly apply in every state. The federal government took nearly $5 billion worth of property via asset forfeiture in 2014, sometimes even without evidence of wrongdoing, and states took hundreds of millions more. If Tim's wins, it could curb the practice across the country. 
In 2011, a group of iPhone buyers claimed Apple had an unlawful monopoly on iOS apps. They argued that by forcing iOS users to use the App Store, and by taking a 30% cut from app developers, Apple passed inflated costs onto consumers. In Apple v. Pepper, which will also be heard in November, the justices will decide whether the iPhone buyers are even able to sue Apple for this alleged monopoly in the first place. Only direct purchasers can sue under antitrust law. And Apple claims that users actually buy apps from developers, not from Apple itself. The ruling could affect how much power consumers have over tech giants. Senator Joe Manchin spent the day after his vote to confirm Brett Kavanaugh campaigning at a senior citizen center in his home state. He was the lone Democrat to help get Kavanaugh on the bench today. But what looks like a flip-flop or a betrayal of his party to people outside West Virginia might be easier to explain to his constituents here. I've made some tough votes over my career. Uh, Once I have the facts and I can come home and explain, I'm voting for it. So my vote was the same no matter what. West Virginians had been led by Democrats for decades, but they overwhelmingly backed President Trump. As the country becomes more divided, Manchin is hearing frustration on all sides. Frank Luntz, a veteran Republican pollster, tapped into that by speaking to West Virginians who've supported both Republicans and Democrats on the day that Manchin announced he'd back Kavanaugh. How many of you think Brett Kavanaugh told the truth? Raise your hands. Almost all of you. How many of you think Dr. Ford told the truth? Raise your hands. So you think they both told the truth? I believe that she probably was victimized. I I have no no concerns whatsoever about her story. I just don't think she knows exactly who it was. She's making a claim that can't be verified, substantiated by anybody other than than this woman. And I, I feel sorry that she's upset, but I have a hard time with 40 years Uh, And all of a sudden now I have clarity of thought and I can come in and I'm gonna... She admittedly wasn't completely clear in her thoughts. Nothing takes 40 years. If you're that much of a weak person that it took you 40 years to get enough... Do you really want to say that? I do, I do. Are you serious? If you're that way, anybody can talk you into anything. If you have that little faith in yourself that it took you 40 years to confront someone who put their hand over your mouth, you didn't go home to your mom, you didn't tell your best friend, you didn't tell law enforcement. Have you ever 40 had to deal years? with that situation in your life? You don't. 40 you don't years? understand what it's like to be a woman in this day and age where men get by with most things because you have a shame years. and people don't want to tell other people because it's going to happen years. like her. People aren't going to believe you. You can't always prove it. You're not going to have a video camera there are women who go to their graves with that secret. I'm not going to destroy a man's career over because the fact he's a that man she's weak enough what? to wait 40 years to make the, 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 the allegation. But I, I want to ask you, I know this is personal. Did you ever face this situation? Yes. Did you ever face this in a physical way? Yes. In a way that Dr. Ford faced? By family, yes. By family? Yes. Can I have permission just for a moment to go here? Sure. When someone describes a woman as being weak because she chooses not to relive it again and again, what's your reaction to that? I am offended by that, to be honest with you, because she's not weak. Um, I never spoke out about my situation, ever. Never told anybody. Why not? Shame. Even though I didn't do anything wrong, uh, shame, pure and simple. And I didn't mean to offend you, ma'am, but my wife was abused as a child. She was sexually abused. She remembers all of it. She has told me all of it. Any woman that would make that claim, I take seriously. I have three daughters and a granddaughter and a wife that's been sexually abused. I think the woman is weak. I use that adjective to describe her because that's what she reminds me of, a weak person. Should we be proud of this whole hearing, this whole process over the last couple of months? No, but how many things from 50 years ago were even worse than they are today? What does this say about our democracy? Nothing good. It's not working. <laughs> Who do you hold accountable for that? Our leaders. The House, the Senate, the President, everybody. You have a senator who's right in the middle of this 
We know that Joe Manchin is a political opportunist, right? He, he licked his finger, he stuck it in the wind, and he said, which way is this vote gonna go? I'm gonna jump on that. And that's the only reason he did that. He, I mean, he followed the lead of Chuck Schumer. That's, because, a, pretty, that's a pretty ugly Well, I think it's analysis. obvious. I agree. That's obvious. I think everyone would probably agree with that. So raise your hands if you're voting for Manchin. So it's a pretty negative evaluation that you're still voting for him. They're, they're the Southern Democrats, he might be the last one on the planet. He's a West Virginia Democrat. And, 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 and somehow or another, I find that refreshing um, that you can get a guy almost John McCain style that kind of looks at everything going, okay, what's it to my state? What way should I go based off what my state thinks, not what, not what the, the political leadership wants? Will you vote for Manchin? Yes. Did you vote for Trump? Yes. So you're, you voted Republican in 2016, but you're voting Democrat in 2018. I vote for the person that meets my needs or my ideas. Yeah. I no longer do party. Party lines to are some, blurred anyway. Yeah, now. they are. That's West Virginia. We elected, we elected President Trump by 42 points, and we elected a Democratic governor by six or eight, and then he flipped to a Republican. I mean, this state's just unique. So this is what's fascinating to the rest of the country. They don't know people like you. They don't know West Virginia and how that works politically. When you come into the state of West Virginia and say that you're gonna take away coal miners' jobs and most people around here have family, friends, or somebody that rely on that, you're not gonna get my vote. That's our economy. I mean, we have thousands of people out of jobs that can't find a job because that's all they did from high school now. There's an alarmingly high addiction rate. Um, a lot of people are uneducated. If you look at the stats for college dropouts, high school dropouts, um, at an all-time high, a lot of you know teenage pregnancies, the welfare, I mean, the amount of people who are on some type of public assistance, it's ridiculously we high. Have, so we have tons of schools that are in the top 10. Hurricane mm -hmm. Middle School is number five in the country for all middle schools across the United States. But for every school like that we have, we have another one that's in the bottom 10%. Well, that's of, easily explained. We had Democrats in control of both houses for 82 years. 82 years of one party controlling both houses so you're of legislation. Blaming, you're blaming a political party for the lack of education in this yes. state. For the education because funding, for sure. For the certain. The coal rots from our state. And they made us they, junkies. They made us, you know. They made us slaves to an economy and made us dependent on an economy that did no slaves good for us. Slaves to an economy. Yes. The interesting thing, though, saying that we're not that great of a state, but these are a proud people. Yep. Don't knock West Virginia, is all I got to tell you. <laughs> Find the defendant, Jason Van Dyke, guilty of second-degree murder. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, All right, bail will be revoked. Find us revoked, he's going to jail. Oh. We're calling on the city to come down to City Hall, come join us at City Hall, because we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Will Calloway's voice carries weight in Chicago because three years ago, he helped push for the release of the dash cam video of Laquan McDonald's murder. How many shots? 16 shots! How many shots? 16 shots! How many shots? The fight over the video's release convinced activists that city officials believed blue lives mattered more than black ones. The video itself convinced the jury that Officer Van Dyke did not act in self-defense. So instead of leading a protest, Calloway and other activists cleared the way for a victory lap. Glenn, get those police out the way. Because when I come down there, uh, ain't no blocking nobody. Tell them to get out the way unless they want mass arrest right now. I'm not playing. Tell them, Glenn, listen to me. Glenn, I'm going to tell them to get wild in a minute. Get out their way. Who's Glenn? He's like a community li liaison for the department. Yeah. He's a house nigga. Watch out! Watch out, man! Oh, what's up? We did it, boy! 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 Will 
Well, if that if you wouldn't know Laquan McDonald's name, okay? They they got the tape released. Make some noise right now for Will and Brandon. The celebration lasted for hours, ending with the shutdown of an intersection along Chicago's Magnificent Mile. The following day, Calloway was honored at Reverend Jesse Jackson's 77th birthday celebration. And we thank God for this man who is doing a great work, William Calloway. I want everybody to stand on your feet, embrace these leaders as they come. To the black community, not just here, but all across America, where they wouldn't give us justice for, for Trayvon Martin, they didn't give us justice for Mike Brown, they didn't give us justice for Sandra Bland, but Chicago, we got justice for Laquan McDonald. Uh, it was a sad moment watching uh, Gavirta come up. I don't think it was a uh, big surprise, but uh, we thought there was a chance he could, he could be found not guilty, but um, ultimately he wasn't. Patrick Murray has been a Chicago officer for 29 years. He's also the vice president of Chicago's police union, the Fraternal Order of Police. He says the Van Dyke verdict was a slap in the face. I think that uh, he did the best, best he could in, in that situation. Could you see yourself in, in Van Dyke's shoes? Well, I had a guy come at me with a knife one time, and uh, uh, and I actually was in, my, in his shoes, and I know exactly how he felt. But what happens is your entire body slows down. I could feel a perspiration coming down my face, and all I could do is see this guy coming down the steps at me, and I continued to yell at him, uh, hoping that he would uh, drop the knife. How about the person on the other side? I mean to be in the shoes of Laquan McDonald, for example, interacting with a police officer as a young African-American male. He, did, he chose not to stop. He was on PCP. He was committing a burglary. He attempted to stab somebody with a knife. Did many things that, had he complied at all, this would not have happened. But the debate right now has been about use of force on the, on the police side, that the, the numbers of African-American men being killed right now it's, it's minimal. Higher than it's, it's, it's been. It's, it's, it's overblown. It's not. It's. I'd have to look at my one percent of shootings or whatever it is. It's police officers are getting murdered across this country. That's what the story is. Do you think that there is a problem with with police violence, use of deadly force at all? I don't. I, I, everyone's got cameras today. Okay. Everything. Everything that you do is under a microscope. There is no acting out of line. You know those days are over. Murray would not comment on the other three Chicago officers now facing charges of conspiracy for covering up what happened during the Laquan McDonald shooting, citing the ongoing case, but says he and the union fully back the officers and are pushing for an appeal for Van Dyke. I mean, what would have to happen that you would think is an example of a police officer going too far? I mean, is that possible? Well, I, in 29 years, I don't recall any situation like that. I mean, I think you're, you're judged You can't by, think of one. I can't think of not one. I really can't. Okay, take six. T-pose and roll take six. So I recently heard about this thing called the dream gap. It's the idea that girls between the ages of six and seven start to doubt themselves and how smart they are. And that means that some girls then will dream less big as they go out into the world. The Meet Barbie. America Young looks nothing like the blonde-haired, blue-eyed fashion doll, but she's the actress Mattel picked to bring its pre-feminist icon onto the internet. What was your first reaction to hearing that Barbie would potentially have a vlog? You know, at first, I kind of rolled my eyes a little because, well, first of all, I didn't know how they were going to do that. Sure. First of all. But second of all, um, I didn't know what the, the intention behind it was, you know, and I, I, I think it's now that I'm looking at it retrospectively, it's brilliant because it's the best way to connect. Barbie's one of the world's best known toys. She's also, depending on your view, an independent jet setter whose boyfriend is just an oversized accessory or an embodiment of the worst myths about the female form. 
modern consumers seem to agree with the last part. Sales dropped 20% from 2012 to 2014, prompting Mattel to roll out a Benetton ad's worth of new Barbies in 2016, and hire America for a vlog that tackles bullying, female empowerment, and even depression for 5 million YouTube subscribers. But sometimes I still feel blue. And then I feel guilty about feeling sad because I am supposed to be the upbeat, positive one all the time. Barbie is definitely more relatable, but her ideology is as carefully molded as her plastic. So what is yes. she gonna wear yes. on her hair? Some, yes, it to pick her, her hair and wardrobe options. Can we make it a color like pink or something? Sure, because pink is power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Julia Pister, who's produced kids' movies like A Series of Unfortunate Events, and Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, oversees Barbie's vlogs. So when you set out to write these vlogs, how do you, how does the team come up with topics? The brand and the business really spends a lot of time knowing kind of what, what girls want today, what, what is this conversation going on societally. We also are a company that sells dolls and sells dream houses and sells cars. So for example, when there's a new dream house coming to market, she renovated her house. So she had a new dream house, so we did a room tour. How do you make that feel like not straight up marketing. So there's a really fun baking oven that, I mean, which I'm just like, oh, that's magic, I love it. So they were like, do you think that that could inspire, this is a great process, would that inspire a vlog, do you think? And it totally did, because I saw it and it's cupcakes and it's like, great, Barbie and Ken will go in the kitchen and we can use that oven and they're going to make competing cupcakes and they're gonna use different ingredients and it's gonna be sort of a science test. In that sense, Barbie does feel like a real influencer. She hawks products just like any other YouTuber. Everything you see in this room is actually in stores, which is unbelievable! We dropped socks. Yeah, we made new socks. So now while you hustle for your dreams, hustle in style with the official new Team Super Sweater! But Barbie isn't just selling a product. She is the product. That means there are thick lines around what she will and won't say. Lisa McKnight is the senior vice president and general manager of the Barbie brand and says the strategy is working. We are seeing incredible positive momentum. Uh, we ended last quarter up 12%. I think a lot of people are excited by the idea that like Barbie is woke. We love that association, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Do you see a future where Barbie talks about racism, about privilege? We don't want to be divisive. The brand has 99% awareness, tons of affinity. You know, we are ubiquitous in terms of where we sell our product. And so we don't want to alienate anybody. We want to be inclusive and we want every girl to find a way into the brand. Peace. Check out my next vlog. At least on YouTube. On Friday, Variety reported that the long-awaited Barbie movie may finally come to theaters. America's not in talks to star. Margot Robbie is.